Hello everyone and welcome back to another Ruby on Rails speedrun. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer and we'll get started. I'll type Rails new uh, CSV or I'll call it video dash J ES build dash C bootstrap. That sounds good to me. And then we can run that. Now what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be creating a basic CSV importer that just imports some people that have names and ages, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and this is going to be referencing a Super Rails tutorial that covered how to do a CSV import service using Ruby. I'll have a link to that in the video description. Excellent tutorial. Uh, but we're going to be creating this small little CSV importer. Then we're going to have like some customer scope creep where they ask us to, I don't know, like uh, graph the people's ages or something. Uh, and we'll do some other stuff as well, like uh, maybe a delete button. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and type code dot to open up a VS code. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag that over here. And then we can come into our terminal and we can get started. I'm going to hit F11 to full screen. Uh, okay, so for this, what we need is we're going to need bundle add. Um, uh, actually, I don't know if we use any gems for this. We'll just start with a Rails G controller pages home. It gives us a home page to work with. We can then do a Rails G scaffold for the people. Each people person has a name of type string by default, age of type integer. Go ahead and run that. Then we uh, we have our controller. We have that. We should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and do a um, oops a bin slash dev. I don't know why it looks like that whenever I type, but we'll just go ahead and do that. Come over here, refresh the application. It'll tell us to run some migration. So we click the little button, and then we can do a routes.rb. Inside of our routes, I'll hit control plus a couple times so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to set the root of the application to be the pages controller home action. We'll come into our app, our views, our pages, and our home page in here. We'll change the header here to the people importer. We'll hit uh, alt 0153 for the trademark symbol. And then we'll just change this P tag to be because the customer, oops, customer made me do it. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and let's render a partial for the people slash uh, import form, I guess is what we can call it. I'll go ahead and copy this, come down to the people folder, right click new file, and we'll say underscore import underscore form that HTML that ERB. There we go. And now inside of our routes, I guess we probably want to do a uh, collection do. And then in here, we want to do a post to import and and there we go now inside of our controllers and our people controller we can do that import so we'll say def import and and in here um how do we want to do this basically we want to uh pass a file in with a params of type file oops we then want to uh redirect if bad data and then we want to uh import data and then we want to uh, redirect with notice. Okay, so if our data is bad, so we want to redirect to the root path with an alert that says no file selected uh, unless we have a file, something like that. We can then come down here and we can say return redirect to the root path with an alert of, um, uh, please only upload, uh, 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 please select CSV file instead. And we'll say do this, uh, unless the file type uh, the file dot content type is equal to text slash CSV. Okay. Now we can do our, um, import. So we'll say CSV import service is equal to a CSV import service dot new, and we'll pass in the file. Let's go create that. We'll right click on app, new folder, call it services. Inside of our services folder, we'll right click new file. We'll call this CSV underscore import underscore service dot RB. We'll give this a class of CSV import service. And in here, what I want to do is actually stop the server and restart it. And the reason why we do that is because it will not pick up this file unless we restart once. I think it's because we're creating the folder for this. Uh, we'll then do a def initialize for our at file and a def, oops, a def import. That works. Thank you, copilot. But up here, I want to also create a at count, set it equal to zero, uh, because we're going to be using this to track how many things we've imported. Now, inside of the service, uh, we need to do, uh, we have our CSV dot for each. This is fine. Thank you, copilot. Uh, we then come in here and we say, for each of the people, read the headers inside of the CSV. 
we'll create a person uh, we call row dot to hash that that does whatever it needs to in in terms of the row because the row will be something like um, um, ID uh, name and age and that reminds me we actually need to create the CSV uh, and then we don't need this at countdown here uh, instead what we can do is we can say um, def number imported with last run it's a long one i know but we can just return at count if we call that and then at the start of our import we'll say at count should be equal to zero again okay there we go that works now we need to actually create the csv so let's come over to google and look for a csv generator we'll come to the convert csv.com i'll have a link to this in the video description and down at the bottom here, they tell you all the different fields you can use. I'm going to go with what I know, which is a sequence for the ID, uh, a name and a age. And then we can name these as well. And we can say this first one should be ID. Second one should be name. Third one should be age. We'll click generate this. Uh, let me see. Let me zoom in a bit so you can actually read this. This seems fine to me. So let's go ahead and let's download this. We'll save this as uh, people.csv download result. Save this, and then we can come over to our Rails app, refresh the page, and we need to uh, do some more work. So let's come into our layouts, our application.html.erb. Let's wrap this entire thing inside of a .container.mt-5, which comes from Bootstrap. That'll just force everything to be repositioned a bit. Then uh, above that container, let's do a render for uh, layout slash alerts. Inside of our layouts, right click new file underscore alerts.html.erb. We'll do one if we have a notice, and we'll do one if we have an alert, and then we can do an end, and then we can hit control L to copy that line, come down here, paste it again. In here, what we want to do is grab the alert success, and then we want to come into the boot strap five alerts page right here. Uh, on the alerts page, we want to scroll down quite a bit until we find the one with the exit. And we want to grab the alert dismissible, fade, show, and the role of alert. So let's come in here, we'll paste this in. Now we have a alert, alert success, alert dismissible, fade, show, role alert, that looks fine. And then we'll grab this button right here as well. Uh, and we got to get rid of this extra quote. Down below the notice, we'll throw in the button right here. This button is going to be our close button. And then when we come down to the alert, Copilot should hopefully copy that for the danger for the actual alert. There we go. Now let's come over here, refresh the page, and we won't have anything because we haven't uploaded anything. So let's create this, uh, this form. Inside of our home.html, we have the import form, which means inside of people, we have the import form. We just need to actually do the importing here. To do this, we'll do a, uh, a uh, form with a URL to import people path that'll take us to that controller, but we gave this a method of uh, post. So we want to do a colon post do F and then down here we can do an end again. In here we want to do a container and then we want to do uh, for our file uh, f dot file underscore field, call it file, give it an accept of dot CSV. And we'll do a f dot submit with the text that says uh, upload people. Give it a class of btn btn dash primary. And then inside of this, let's do a dot btn dash group because we'll be throwing in another button in here eventually. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and save this. Refresh. Uh, we do have a syntax error in here. We need to give this a equals for the f dot submit. Refresh the page. It's still upset. It is upset with something in here. Uh, we have the form with doesn't need a colon. There we go. Save that. Refresh. We can now choose a file. Let's choose the people.csv. Click upload. And it'll say, uh, let's see what happened. We got a post to people import processing. No template found for people controller import. Let's come into the people controller import. That seems like it should work. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's render all the people in the home page. So let's come down to the views, the pages, and the home.html.erb. Down here, what we'll do is we'll say um, at people dot each do person. And in here, we'll do a dot card. And then hopefully this will auto complete some boots or some copilot stuff for us. Uh, 
doesn't look like it's going to work, but we'll, we'll see. We'll go ahead and do this person.name. And then we'll have an F.6 for the person.age that works. And then let's go ahead and close this div, save this. And that looks like it's fine. So let's come down here and refresh and our people doesn't exist. So let's come into our pages controller inside of our pages controller in the home action at people equals people dot all something like that. We'll refresh until that finishes saving uh, people uh, person. Uh, it's person dot all person dot all. There we go. It's the people controller for the persons. There we go. Choose file, uh, people.csv, we'll click upload. This doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So let's come into our people controller. Our people controller does have an import action. I don't know why this isn't working. Um, inside of our form, our form with, which is inside of the people, we have the import people path method post f dot submit that all seems fine to me i don't know why uh, the parameters work right here no template found for people controller import uh, i'm a little bit confuzzled right now uh, so let's see inside of our oh maybe we need to redirect to the root path I'm, I'm dumb. I got confused here. We need to do a CSV dot import and we need to actually finish our logic in here. I thought we were done after the uh, service, but we're not. Next, we need to do a notice where inside of here we can say uh, we've imported this many people. There we go. We'll save this. We'll now refresh and we'll click choose file. We'll choose the people file. We'll upload the people and it'll tell us we have an uninitialized constant import service CSV. So inside of our CSV import service, what we want to do is uh, up top require CSV. Again, Copilot's great, but sometimes it misses some of the obvious stuff, just like all of us. I mean, I missed it right here as well, so I can't really talk. Let's grab the people, click upload again. We see a progress bar. That means it's importing 100 people imported. We're now grabbing info from our CSV. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and let's chart this. We'll stop the server. We'll hit F11. We'll do uh, control plus a bunch of times so you can actually read what's happening again. We'll do a bundle add for chart kick. That will give us what we need from the chart kick gem. Uh, then I think we do need to do an NPM I for chart kick as well, because I don't think that's included. And we're using NPM because we used ES build. You could also do a bin import map if you want to. Uh, that would also work. They do have instructions for that. We can now do a bin slash dev again, F11. And actually we need to go find the chart kick gem. Uh, because uh, there's some imports we have to do manually, I think, and I can never remember what they are. So inside of our app, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript right here, uh, a JavaScript application, we need to uh, import the uh, these two right here. That works. And now we should be good to refresh, hopefully, and that should work. Let's come into our pages home. And inside of here, what we wanna do uh, below the import form is going to be a column chart, I think, where we do something like, um, um, what was it? What was it? What was it? Let's come in here. Let's come back over to chart kick. Uh, we want to do something like this column chart order, uh, but we don't want to do a group by, we want to just do a group, right? So we want to do a uh, person dot group by age, something like that. Uh, and then dot count, I think maybe refresh. Okay. So it is loading something. I don't know if we need the dot count though. So let's do this instead. Refresh, uh, control shift I to grab this and see what's wrong console. It doesn't seem to be loading the chart. Maybe what we have to do is come into our application JavaScript file. We do have the chart bundle. I wonder if that is not what we need. You might need to import chart.js. That didn't work. Uh, we let's come into the chart kick again and scroll up. What is it? It is the. It's not the chart.bundle, is it? It. I don't know. Let's do this. Uh, let's grab the chart.bundle again, and then let's actually stop the server and restart it and see if that changes anything about how it feels. Doesn't look like it does. Uh, so let's see, let's see home. We have the column chart person age 
And over here, it's telling us to do a line chart person age uh, group right here. Yogurt.group by flavor.count. I don't know. Dot count. Save that. Come over here and refresh. Uh, error loading. No charting libraries found. Be sure to include one before your charts. Let's try npm i chart js. Oops, npm i chart js maybe. And then we'll do a bin slash dev. Refresh. Uh, we still don't have it. Um, let me see. I think I have over here. Let's do JavaScript again. This needs to be a import to chart kick slash chart JS. Maybe that's why let's refresh. There we go. Okay, cool. All right. So now we have the chart happening. Now what happens if they want to upload another CSV, you'll then have 200 users, which will stack the data. Let's say you try to do this and you run into a people ID problem. They, the customer says they don't care about the people ID problem. What they would like is for them to be able to clear the people before uploading another CSV. So you can see how you start to run into these weird edge cases. Now you could do something where you don't import the ID, uh, but the customer says they don't want to do that. They want the, the errors fine. They want to have the error as like protection from uploading duplicated data whatever. It's confusing. It's a mess. How do we do this? So what they want is just a delete button. Let's try to just do a delete button. Now you could, of course, just get rid of your ID inside of the sequence right here. Uh, don't import the sequence and then you'll be perfectly fine. But I'm playing pretend right now. So just play along with me. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come into our home and right here uh, inside of the form, actually not this form, the import people form, uh, what we want to do is add in a button to delete all users. So we'll come down here below the submit people. We want to have a uh, link to clear the people. We'll say this should be to the clear people path. We'll give this a class of btn, btn dash danger comma. And then because this is a delete button and we have turbo and it is absolutely awful for developer experience, you have to give it a turbo method and not a regular method and call it delete. And then after that, let's just do a turbo confirm because of course, and we'll do, are you sure? Question mark. I know I'm going to get some flack for this, but this will never not make me salty. We got to throw all of this inside of some data and hopefully that works just fine uh, so we can do that now we got to come into our routes inside of our routes we need to do a um a a method for the uh the delete i forget what i should call it though uh it needs to be a delete clear people and it needs to be two um people clear save that now we can scroll up to the people controller and below the import method, we can do the clear method. And in here, we just want to dual person destroy all with an alert that says we destroyed all, or maybe we leave it as a notice. Sure. Let's do that. Um, and then let's go ahead, refresh. We have the people, but let's pull this over to the right. How do we do that? We can come over to our, our form again, wherever we just were. And inside of here, we just want to change the styling a little bit. Uh, basically, we have this div for the button group, but we can wrap this entire thing in this container in a .d dash flex dot justify dash content dash end. I think wrap all of this something like that, and then we have our BTNs. I think this is good. Let's come over here and refresh. So if we full screen this, that is all pulled over to the right now. Um, does that seem fine to me? I think that's what I want. So we'll just refresh F11. We'll uh, delete or clear people. We'll click OK. That should hopefully clear it. All people deleted. Our chart's empty. Good to go. Choose another file. We can try. Um, let's try. Actually, let's just try a blank file. It tells us no file selected. So let's close that. Choose another file. We'll grab uh, our people.csv. Click upload people. We get the progress bar. And now we get the people uploaded, which means we can stop the speed run. All right, so that is basically what I wanted to cover for this. Uh, hopefully this was interesting and uh, I don't know, useful in some way. I always like going through these because it's just like, I basically come up with an idea last second and see if I can pull it off. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful and interesting and hopefully I will see you in the next video.